am in a I am in a big hotel, and uh, I am with with my uh, producing partner Douglas. We are the only two people in the in the hotel. It does feel like um, straight out of a movie, I suppose. <laughs> it's it's a little like The Shining. Yeah, it feels a bit like The Overlook. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> Yeah, um, I haven't seen any twins yet, though. So. <laughs> no, it's such a it's such a great pleasure to meet you, um, and to have tea with you. And yeah. um, first, very British question I just have to ask you is how do you take your tea? Um, I take. Uh, I, I, it's quite strong tea. I think here they call they call it builders tea, <laughs> um, and uh, it, it's sort of uh, dark British tea. And um, I, if I make tea in a pot, then I have to put the milk in first. Mm -hmm. There's, I know there's a big discussion around that. Yeah, whether you put the milk in after, but I always put the milk in first, and I don't know whether that what what that says about me. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm not very cultured. <laughs> I'll think of well, I don't know which one is the cultured version, but I'll I'll think about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look it up. So I'm always really I'm really interested in the fact that you played so many characters that have been real pe you know, real people. Um yeah. and I've just been wondering how what what's the line between interpretation and imitation and like how how do you work, especially with a director? Like how many liberties do you take? Do you sit a lot alone doing research or is there like a long conversation? And I guess what's sort of like the Fincher approach yeah. or the Joe Wright approach? Well, the difference I think is if you're playing a fiction, when you play a, a character that has lived um, and you take, let's say a character like Churchill, there's so much information. There's so much footage, there's so many books. He wrote 50 books himself, and there must be 200, 300 books that have written about him. Um, uh, there's places that you can actually go and you can visit him. Mm. So it sort of becomes, it's three dimensional. And infinite, right? I and and inf yeah, it, it infinite, really, it yes. Um, now, so you, you, you can gather all this information if you wish. I mean, ultimately you're speaking the words on the, in the text, you, right. you know, but if you, if you want to bring all of that other stuff in, then you, then you can. What you do with a fictional character in a way is you're filling all of that in mm -hmm. because that isn't there for you. Mm -hmm. you, you you know um i i mean i've yes i played many famous people uh, it's not something I, I i don't have a sort of i never had a game plan Anything, to kind of right. no agenda you know, no to look for these people i mean they just they just happen to to come in um with mang specifically um i didn't know a great deal about Mankiewicz and obviously he's not as famous and as iconic as Churchill and so th the fact that I don't really look like him or, or it, it would never worry David mm -hmm. he, he wasn't really con concerned about that um, and I must say that a great deal of the work had been done for me because mm -hmm. Jack Fincher's script which is David's father late father had done um, a really wonderful job. I think he, he had obviously done his research. So anything that I was reading around it, um, it sort of correlated with what I was, what, it, what, what was there on the page. I right. felt that Jack had really captured a, 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 an essence or a spirit of Mank. Um, and and then from from there we just basically sat around uh, a, 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 we rehearsed but a, a, like a table rehearse we mm -hmm. didn't physically get up on our feet but yeah. and then we discussed David discusses character and 
various beats and the moments and if if I, I know there was a little light dusting he did on the script mm -hmm. um, because you know David it works in the industry and is it, it, and a practitioner whereas and you, you whereas, look at how much has actually yeah, changed right <laughs> yeah, and, and whereas Jack sort of got that in a way second hand right um uh and and maybe a little uh, overly sort of romanticized what it's actually like to make a movie mm -hmm. and so so david made some changes in that respect but um yeah we we like like most it, it like joe right with joe right you know you discussed character and you you want to you want to know from the get-go what what what's in the director's mind mm -hmm. and and the overview of the, the movie you're making right so that we're on the same that Thank we're on the same you. page yeah, um, yeah i mean an example of that would be um uh working with oliver stone and jfk right you know i i didn't come in with oliver saying you know well i think oswald did it and he did you know <laughs> <laughs> you, you were, that that I don't think I don't think that would that that wouldn't work. <laughs> right, right. That's uh, no, and I mean it's interesting because you just um you just touched on that you, you know you don't have like a, a game plan coming to these characters, but I was wondering if you if you feel like there are certain themes or questions that you're drawn to, and do you feel like you look out? for them you know like if you call into the forest then the forest calls back or whatever the saying is like do you set out to look for certain projects or do you feel they come to you like and you just I, I think no i really i i think they they just most of the work i've done has just come through you know via me, me or my, my, mainly the manager or agent mm -hmm. It's kind of really done that way. It's not that I'm, I'm consciously looking for stuff, and also really, if there's any, if there are any connections to the people I've played, uh, or my fascination with them, um, I, then that's subconscious. Mm -hmm. I I don't really, um, I mean, if you look at was Sid Vicious, you could look at Joe Orton. What I mean, they're sort of mavericks, aren't they, in a way? They're mm. both outsiders, they're both anti-establishment. Um, you know, Mank has a bit of that. Yeah. Uh, sure. uh, uh, Beethoven. Yeah, they may have there's they may have a thread going through them, but I don't really uh I don't really consciously I think just something connects. Mm -hmm. You 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 know. You with, with Mank, for example, um, when I got the script, uh, I, I had a, a heads up, you know, it was obviously, it's Fincher, it's the gold, golden era, sort of golden age of Hollywood. And, yeah, um, and then read the script. And it was, to me, it was, uh, it was a page turner. And I, so it, it, it truly was one of the best scripts I'd read in a long time. And um, I just connected connected to it. And, uh, uh, you know, you do these, it's funny, yeah. you do these projects. And, um, you know, it's for two months, it's for eight weeks, it's six weeks, it's three months, it's what, however, long you're going to spend it, it, it i mean on average it's a 12 hour a 12 hour day sometimes it's a six day shooting week sometimes it's five but you do look at all the variables and all the different you know you respond to the project and then the director, director. the people in the cast you know and you and, and then you think yeah i could spend 12 weeks right 12 weeks of my life in this world <laughs> like will i yeah. choose that parallel universe it, versus yeah in the in the scheme of things um mm -hmm. do i want to be around these people 
every day for 12 hours a day. <laughs> so you, 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 you know, you weigh all that up. And really, mm-hmm. I must say, over a f- career that is now, I think, 41 years, I've been doing it. Um, mm-hmm. I've worked with some remarkably talented and lo- one, one yeah, lovely Yeah, you have people. a really, I mean, from Coppola to like, you, just like, like you said, Oliver Stone, like just. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, what is it? It's Stephen Frears, uh, Roland, jo- uh, Roland Joffe, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, um, uh, uh, Alfonso Cuaron, uh, yeah, true. I mean yeah. the the list the, the list is quite. Uh, I mean, this touches on something I've been I've been wondering and I've been meaning to ask yeah. you because I know starting out you did a lot of theater and do you feel a pull to to do theater again? Um, it's weird. Like for me, the pandemic has done a a strange thing because you know time and space are so cut up now. Just you know the unity of time and space, and it feels like doing something on stage is like this living, breathing thing yeah. that you perform yeah. in real time. Well, and then I suddenly had this thing in my head, like, are all movies like Frankenstein monsters? You know, like you spent months in post and you edit stuff together that you don't even remember, you shot that way. And then you try to breathe life into it, like desperately hoping the thing will walk. And, and it's weird. I, I wonder if the, yeah. if the isolation to a certain extent yeah, what's your feeling toward theater? Very, very short question. Well, I, I mean, I do, over the years, I have sort of flirted with it, you know? I, I haven't been on stage for a long time, and mm. I, I did a, a, a great number of years on stage, or, or almost, almost, ne- I was almost never off the stage because, uh, you know, a job would end, and a, and a and a curtain would come down on a Saturday, a, a Saturday evening, and I would invariably be in rehearsal on the Monday morning or the following week to right. go to do another to do another show, or if, for instance, we were doing a season, we did a season at the uh, at, 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 at the Royal Court we were performing in the evening and rehearsing the next play during the day. Um, I, 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 here's, a, here's a thing, actually, um, where making, making Mank was somewhat similar to a theater experience. Um, when, when you rehearse a play, you are really, you're acting you're acting from 10 in the morning until six at night. Yeah. But, okay, you know, so you're, you're sort of acting full time. And uh, once you begin uh, with, with, with David, he wants you in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. He wants to, to, uh, to utilize the time he has with you in front of the camera. And so you really are, in a way, you're the acting. Capacity. Yeah. It, you're, yes. It's, and, it's and, great. Yeah. And it, and it was, uh, yeah, you really came away, you really came away at the end of the day thinking, it was like acting boot camp. <laughs> like like, being on stage full time and just the camera over and over again, right? Like yeah, and you don't have kind the, of wonderful to be honest. Yeah, yeah, you don't have the the same kind of downtime in the di- digital age. Yeah, yeah, you don't spend a great deal of time twiddling your thumbs in the trailer. That's good. That's full full on, right? And one other thing, I just I just have to ask you. So. Um, I knew you directed, written and directed the film, a film before No By Mouth, which I watched recently. And then I was gonna ask you, um, you know, are you gonna do that again anytime soon? And I realized you're actually planning a project on, on my bridge, the photographer. So I don't know if you're under any sort of NDA, like non-disclosure oath or no, something, but no, can no. you talk about it? Um, what, what's the no, deal it, there? Well, there's been, um, there, there have been many projects since. Mm-hmm. I, have quite a f- I have quite a few there sitting on the shelf. 
and I um, couldn't get them made mm. for one, one reason or another. And then I wrote this piece on my bridge, which has got to be seven, eight years ago. I, I, I'm proud of it. I think it's, right. I, I do what, think it's a Because what a life, good, right? I mean, yeah. he, uh, he shot the lover of the yeah. wife and the whole confusion with the letter and yeah, it's it's and, and of course he was on trial for murder. Mm -hmm. um, he got off, right? And um, it was really, I guess, one of the first what you would call a, a crime of passion. Mm -hmm. I get, I guess, it would be categorized as that, mm -hmm. an all male jury. So right. back then, um, uh, he got off and then achieved all the work he did with the with the motion. But yeah, it's a fascinating, uh, fascinating story. He's he could you could say arguably he's the sort of grandfather of cinema, cinema. of the yeah. moving image, um, and uh, no one wants to make it. Right. There you go. Mentors, what have been? I I suppose there must have been sort of mentor figures in your life that, um, um, and I was just wondering if you have any sort of. Um, advice on like finding mentors or, 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 or relationships with mentors or, or are directors mentors to you as an actor or is that a very different relation like anatomy of a relationship there? Obviously when I was first starting out, um, you know, the learning curve is much, it's much steeper. Uh, I mean, now uh, that is obviously, I mean, that's, that has leveled off. But when you're starting out and there are those people that do come along that you meet who teach you and, and guide you. Uh, yeah, there have been a few in the, in, in, in the early days. Um, the very first thing I ever did on film was a, uh, was a, a, a little film I did called Remembrance. Mm -hmm. And it was it was at the the launch of Channel Four. I mean, now Channel Four is film on four. I mean, it's a big okay. big deal. But but back then, it was a it was new, and it was. Uh, I think this film was going to play. You know, maybe the second, third, or fourth week of mm -hmm. this new thing called Channel Four. <laughs> um, and I had never really done anything on film, <clears throat> and I worked with. Um, I worked with this director, Colin Gregg, who directed it. And he gave me a few, you know, pointers. And, and so you pick, you kind of, you, you pick it up as, as you go along. And you'll meet, you, I think along the way, you meet someone who will say, have you ever seen this movie? I recommend watching this movie. Have you ever read this book? Have you ever read this author? I really recommend it. Um, let me know, come back, let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard this piece of music? You know, so you, you if, you're, if you're lucky enough, you can work with uh, some very talented, wise, experienced people. Wow. And, um, and uh, you, ga you gather. I mean, it's interesting. I know you also, worked with Bowie um, a little bit, who's just, I don't know, for me, um, I'm, I'm a huge admirer of his work. And, yeah. and I remember one, one thing, I read it somewhere, he said something like, um, if you walk into, like, he was talking about fear and how it's really important to art. And like, if, if you walk into the water and your feet can just, just about not touch the ground anymore, that's like the, the place you wanna be in. And that's where something exciting is gonna possibly happen. I was gonna ask you sort of about, um, you know, fear in 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 the journey of 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 being working in film and working telling stories, and uh, and do you do you choose roles despite the fear or because of the fear? No, sense? I think what happens is um, a, a, a role will come in. I always, I've always said, I'm being a little glib, but I've said, you know, sometimes the most exciting thing is getting the phone call. 
you know, because mm-hmm. it's it, it, so they say they want you to play this role, you know. I mean, take Mank. Uh, you know, it's David Fincher. Uh, this terrific script, you know, golden age of Hollywood, um, and this incredible story about the, 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 this writer of Citizen Kane, all of that. I mean, it's got, it's amazing. And so you say, oh my heavens, I want to do this. Oh yeah, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah, and then you go, holy crap, what have I said yes to? <laughs> now I've got, now I've got now to do all do that. It. Now I've got to do it. You know, in, when you do theater, you know, you're, you're working on your feet with the actors. You're, and you're repeating and repeating and working on the text in a very, very concentrated, detailed way for a number of weeks. You, you don't work scenes like that. In, in film, we had rehearsal for Mank. We had rehearsal for Darkest Hour, but that's very rare. Precious, right? And some directors don't even like rehearsal. They don't, they, they, they just want it to be, you know, their first time kind of in, in, in the moment. So, I mean, you are coming to a set more often than not, you know, where you're saying the words, out loud for the first time in the scene with the person you've just met the person that you know talking about Frankenstein monsters right and then you hope it comes together somehow and has part yeah, of the actual and, part in it in the end yeah yeah and, and it's amazing that anything's any good <laughs> right despite <laughs> not because of the brevity yeah so when you do see something that's good you know if you're in the know and you're in the industry um, you kind of know the effort and the and the you you realize what the, the miracle it is when yeah. you see it. You know? <laughs> the miracle of movies. That sounds like yeah. a really that sounds like a really grand um, end to fitting your the yeah. location you currently. The magic in. of movies. The ma- right there we go. As the magic Mank would of say. Just just like I said. Okay. All right. Well, I do think. Well, it's lovely having tea with you. It has been a real pleasure. And all the best with the MyBridge project. I want to say Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you.